Typically, when an index is used in a query, Oracle will first read the index to get the matching index keys, and then look up the corresponding rows in the table using the row IDs read from the index. However, if all of the data needed by your query is contained within the index, then Oracle is able to skip the table lookup operation and just return the data directly from the index. When this happens, the index is said to be a covering index, because the index is able to cover all of the data needs for this query. Whether an index is a covering index or not is query dependent, but if the index is a covering index, the query will perform faster because Oracle doesn't have to perform the row lookup operation on the table, thereby saving I.O. from the table as well as processing time. The easiest way to understand the concept of covering indexes is to jump directly into an example, so let's do that. I have a very simple ASP.NET MVC application here, and this page is used to search for students in the database. For this search form, the last name is required and all of the other fields are optional. So you can imagine this form helps you search for someone if you know their last name and maybe what department their major's in, if they're a first year student, second year student, and so on, or if you know their first name. So let's enter a last name and perform a search. So we see our results here. We can also go back and be a little bit more specific if we want to spell out a specific department. And again, now our results are narrowed down. So this is the output that we get. We have here the student's name, we have the information on what they're majoring, and then their class standing. Again, this first year, second year, or what year of their studies that they're in. And if you click on the details button, you'll get a little bit more detailed information. Obviously, this is not a real application here. We'd have much more detailed information. What we really want to focus on, though, is the search process and the results that come back. And the important thing to note is these columns that come back being the student ID, first and last name, their degree, and their class standing. So let's take a look at the query that's producing these search results and the index that supports this search. I'm in SQL Developer, and first off, this is the index that supports the search that we just saw. The last name column is first, because that is always included in the search, and then the first name column, the degree the student is pursuing, which effectively is their department, and finally their class standing code, so something like first year, second year, third year, and so on. Down here, this is the query that the application was running. There are a couple of joins to get some data from other tables, and then down in the where clauses, if one or more of these criteria was included in the search, then the corresponding criteria in the where clause would be included in the statement. It wouldn't be commented out as shown here. So let's run this query with an auto trace and see what Oracle is doing for an execution plan. What I want to focus on is this pair of operations right here, the index lookup in the IX student search name index and the resulting table lookup in the student's table. As it turns out, the only reason we are performing the lookup to the student's table is because we need to get the value of one column, student ID. The other four columns this query needs can all be found in the IX student's name search index. So it is just this one column that Oracle is performing this table access by row ID lookup for. This is causing 32 blocks of I.O. to occur in this case. Remember, the 34 blocks shown on this line includes all the subtrees, so two of these blocks are from the index operation that we see just below, which leaves us with 32 blocks for this table access by index row ID operation. What I want to show you is that if I drop the existing index, and I recreate the index with the student ID column included at the end. Now let's rerun our query and see what we get. We see that now Oracle is no longer performing the table lookup. It is able to get all of the information that it needs for this query from the index. And therefore, for this query, the index is said to be a covering index. In this case, we do have a performance benefit in that we're saving 32 logical I.O. operations. In absolute terms, this isn't very large because our students table isn't a very large table. But in this case, that was about 30% of the blocks that were needed in order to perform this query. 
If we can identify an index that is a covering index, or that we could make a covering index perhaps by adding just one column, the benefit we receive is that Oracle does not have to perform the table lookup operation. If you have an index operation that's returning several hundred rows, a covering index can offer quite a benefit because these rows are probably randomly distributed in the table, so Oracle would have to read that many blocks in order to get the results that it needs. So you're saving these I.O. operations from needing to be performed because Oracle's getting all the data it needs from the index. So you may notice that there are some cases where Oracle is performing an index operation and then doing a subsequent table access by index row ID to get the value of only one or maybe two columns. And if so, it may be strategic to add those columns to the index and convert the index into a covering index for that query, because this can provide a performance boost for that query. If the index that you have already has all of the columns that you need, then no problem. But if you do need to add a column to an index to make it a covering index, you have to weigh the benefits against the potential drawbacks. First of all, adding a column to the index is going to increase the size of the index. Second, there's the index maintenance cost to consider. If the column you add to the index is updated frequently, then the maintenance cost for this index is going to be higher. Finally, you have to consider that a covering index is probably only going to be a covering index for one or perhaps two queries. So in the end, if you're looking to add a column to an index just to make that index a covering index, you have to analyze whether or not the benefits you receive are going to outweigh the cost of adding this column to that index. In summary, you should be aware of what a covering index is. If you have an important query that is frequently run and the columns needed by the query are a close match to what is already in the index, then adding a column or two to create a covering index is a technique that can be used to boost the performance of the query because you're eliminating the table lookup operation. A covering index should by no means be regarded as a silver bullet though. Every column you add to an index adds overhead. And if you are adding multiple columns to your index so that now your index is just a slightly skinnier version of your table, then you're going to have to pay for that in your DML operations. So whatever you do, make sure to thoroughly test what you plan to do in a solid test environment. And look not just at the effect on the query that you're targeting, but on other SQL statements that use the table to make sure that the benefits you receive justify the costs that you're going to incur. Applied wisely, though, a covering index can provide a significant performance boost to a critical query.